Hey there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us during this Leaky Gut mini series. So far, we've talked about what is leaky gut? How is it diagnosed? What are different symptoms that you have associated with it? As well as maybe other different conditions that may be associated with leaky gut. So today we want to talk about the more dietary side of things. What specific foods may play a factor in leaky gut? Since leaky gut is related to the gut, maybe foods are gonna be a factor. So if I was to avoid certain foods to help to give my gut a chance to heal, which ones would you avoid first? Well, you made a, a very valuable association there, which is food affects our gut. Mm -hmm. And if our gut is inflamed and therefore having a hard time tolerating certain things and having a vicious cycle every time we eat something making it worse, it would be important for us to identify which foods create inflammation and then remove those foods from our diet. And there's a lot of foods in the world, yeah. obviously. But there are certain categories of foods that tend to show more benefit when they come out of the diet during the phase of leaky gut than remaining inside of them. The four most common ones that I often have my patients start with would be gluten, which is found in wheat, barley, and rye. Casein, which is found in dairy, not eggs, but milk-related dairies. Mm -hmm. Corn and soy. So therefore, if a patient had leaky gut-like symptoms and they wanted to run an experiment, I would often have them remove gluten, dairy, corn, and soy from their diet for a period of 30 days or so. Yeah. But I know you sometimes include a couple of other foods. What are some of those? Yeah. So other ones, in addition to those top inflammatory foods, are going to be things like artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners can oftentimes play havoc on our nervous systems and on our gut, our brains. So avoiding those and more trying to stay true to more real sugar, so such things such as stevia or xylitol or um, raw cane sugar or honey are going to be better options than the little pink, yellow, and white packets that you may find on the tables at different restaurants you go to. Otherwise, avoiding things like alcohol. Alcohol can play a big factor in overall gut health, not only with the gut, but how it relates to your liver and some of those different tie-ins together as well as trying to get all your food as much from nature as you can. So trying to avoid genetically modified foods, just because though genetic modification process helps to increase yields, we get more food, it changes the composition of those foods and makes them more resistant to herbicides, pesticides, chemicals, which are also very similar to sometimes to the enzymes in your gut that breaks it down. So therefore, if we're making foods resistant to these things, it may also be resistant to our body ability to break it down. So that's why trying to stick to organic or things that are more natural is oftentimes a better option for your overall health and your gut health. Uh, so it sounds like if I avoid gluten, dairy, corn, soy, artificial sweeteners, alcohol, and genetically modified foods, that I have very little to select from when it comes to eating them. I may not need to eat anything at all for 30 days or so. There you go. Just do a fast. <laughs> right. No. Um, at that point, what we like to do is what Dr. Hayden mentioned at the beginning with the inflammatory foods is to avoid those foods for a period of 30 days. Maybe some people that may be up to 90 days, depending on, you know, just the, the burden that their gut already has on it. But giving that gut that period of rest allows those cells to knit themselves back together, to heal, to take that burden off of it, to allow that microbiome, that gut, to come back to more of a sense of balance. We oftentimes like to equivalent it to breaking your leg. And so if you have a broken leg, then obviously, are you gonna want to go run on that broken leg? No, even though classically running is a good thing. If you have a broken leg, you want to cast it to allow it to have time to heal. So in these cases, we are casting your gut to allow it to have time to heal. And so then at the end of that period of 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, then you add in those foods back in one by one to see if you're able to tolerate them at those times. So there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Right. We want to avoid these foods, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a death sentence for those foods. There may be times where you can bring them back in, in the future. Excellent.